sometimes they don't be listing the pay and I don't understand that, but. <laughs> Hey y'all, uh, my name is Brianna. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. So I wanted to make this video today as sort of like a Q&A session. I've been getting a lot of questions um, specifically on my PCT videos and I figured I would come here and answer a lot of those questions in one video so that if you do have any questions, um, hopefully I'm gonna go ahead and answer them for you in here. I do wanna say, I am not an expert, okay? So if I say something that you don't agree with, I apologize for that, but I will be saying everything based on my own personal experience. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna say about that. So I'm not gonna do a lot of like the extra talk at the beginning. I'm just gonna go ahead and get right into the video. I have a little like sheet of paper with some of the questions on it so that I don't forget any of them. So that's why y'all gonna see me looking down a couple of times. <laughs> So one of the first questions that I've been receiving um, is how to get a job as a PCT. So starting with the requirements, I know a lot of places require PCTs to either have a PCT certification or you can get a CNA certification. I got my certification through a community college. It was a month long course and then I had to take the um, CNA like state exam after the course was over and I had to pass in order to get that certification. If you're trying to work with children, I would highly suggest getting this certification in order to work in a hospital that has children. Now there are some places that will offer you on the job training if you're looking to get a CNA certification but don't really have the time to take classes in order to do so. I know a lot of the places um, like nursing homes or uh, assisted living facilities, those kind of places will hire people with little to no experience and offer on the job training. It just depends on the type of facility that you're trying to work at. Now, if you're trying to work in a hospital, they do require you to have that certification. So I would keep that in mind if you are trying to work in a hospital. Another question that I've been getting a lot is how to find a job as a PCT. So my go-to whenever I'm trying to find a job is to look on Indeed.com. Now, I know you can look on LinkedIn. I know you can look work, I mean, get information like word of mouth or look on bulletins or anything like that. But I specifically go to Indeed whenever I'm looking for a new job, if I'm just being honest. So I just go and type in the position that I'm looking for. I will type in the location that I'm looking for that job at, and then I'll go ahead and scroll and see which positions spark my interest. You can also filter out the different um, areas within Indeed. So you can filter out if you're looking for a certain pay rate or a certain time to work or anything like that. You can use the filter to like weed out all of the extra stuff that doesn't really go with what you're trying to look for, if you know what I'm saying. And I'm actually going to insert a clip here so that I can show you how that process works. Okay. So first I'm going to type indeed.com in Google or another search bar and then click it. After getting to the site, I'm going to type patient care tech in the search bar. And then the location I'm looking for, which in my case would be Michigan. I'm then going to scroll all the way to the right where it says all filters. Click it. And here you can sort the jobs by expected pay, what kind of shifts you'd like to have, and if you'd like, experience level as well. It then gives you all of the jobs that correspond with your filter, making it easier to choose what fits your wants and needs. After clicking on a job, you'll see it lists the description, 
what they'll expect for you to do, as well as other information such as information about the hospital. It also includes the minif minimum qualifications for the job. So you see, for this specific job, you'll need a high school diploma or GED. And if you didn't graduate from a nursing school, it shows that you need to either have a PCT, CNA, medical assistant, EMT, or phlebotomy certification, and that they'd prefer six months of experience before applying for the job. Now, don't let that, if it says preferred experience, don't let that discourage you from applying. Still apply. At the end, you'll see where the job is located, what shift it is, and if they expect you to work other shifts or not, as well as the start and end time of the position. So the third question that I get, which is like one of the main questions that I always get asked are, how much do you get paid as a PCT? Now I have worked at a couple of different hospitals. I've also worked as a PCT in a nursing home. So I have worked for different kinds of pay. I have worked at a job where I started at $12 an hour when I was first starting out as a PCT. My next job, I was making $15 an hour. My current job, I'm actually making $21 an hour. So it all depends on where you're trying to work at as well as level of experience. If you're looking for a certain pay grade, I would definitely, when you go in and when you get your interviews and when you go in for your interviews, ask them what the pay is if it's not listed on Indeed or listed on the job board, because sometimes they don't be listing the pay and I don't understand that. But yes, make sure you ask them how much they're going to be paying you per hour, because that's a very important question. Another question that I get all the time is about the flexibility of being a PCT. What are the hours looking like? Do I have to work weekends, this and that? I know from experience, working as a PCT, there are a lot of different options that you can work. You can work part-time or you can work full-time or you can even work contingent where you're only working a certain number of days or hours a month. There are opportunities where you can work rotating shifts, so if you, don't really care for a consistent job um, where you're just working one, like where you're just working at a certain time during the day. A rotating position would be good for you because then you would be able to work days, nights, evenings, all of that. So yes, there are rotating opportunities. There are also opportunities where you can just work certain times of the day. Me, I like to choose jobs where I only have to work day shift. I love working seven to three, seven to three thirty, anything like that. So I like to find jobs where I am going to be working the shift that I prefer to work. Now, I also had a position where it was rotating. So there were some days where I would work days, some days where I would work evening, some where I would work nights. There were also different times where I would work either eights or twelves. It just depends on what kind of job you're looking for, or what kind of time schedule you are looking for. I would also ask about the time requirement, like what time they expect you to want to work for your position because you don't want to go in to your job you don't wanna get hired into a job and then you wanna work day shift and then they're telling you, oh, we have you on night shift. Like that's, that's something that I experienced at my last job. I was unaware that I was going to be rotating. I thought I was gonna be doing straight day shift because that's what the, the listing said when I applied for the job. And I was told, no, it's a rotating position. So I would definitely make sure if you're looking to work at a certain time that you ask them when they're going to expect you to work your shifts. And sometimes they'll ask you if you have a preference. So that's definitely a very good time to let them know if you'd rather work a day shift, a night shift, an evening shift, anything like that. So definitely do that. Weekends are not always required. <laughs> Um, with my job that I'm currently in right now, I am contingent. So I pick the days and the times that I want to work. So I work on the weekends right now because it just works better with my school schedule. But there are jobs working as a PCT where you don't have to work weekends. There's a lot that have Monday through Friday. There's a lot where you can work 
like I said, you can work 12, three days a week, or there's just a lot of different like scenarios, like flexibility wise that you can experience working as a PCT. Another question that I get is about training. So I've been asked if you get trained when you go into your job as a PCT. So from my experience, there are trainings, like the whole like orientation kind of thing. Like some positions do, um, do like where you're being monitored. Uh, I'm trying to think of what the word for that is called by a preceptor. So the preceptor will either be a nurse or another PCT who has been working longer than you or who just has more experience than you. You're just gonna be working over somebody who's been working in the department that you've been working in a little bit longer than you. So during that, they will monitor the different skills that you know how to do, make sure you know how to do them. If you don't know how to do a skill, please ask. They, there are plenty of people who are more than willing to help you and show you how to do different skills. When I was working at my previous position, there were a lot of times where I had to ask for help. Like I had never drawn blood before, ever. So when they had on the list that drawing blood was a requirement, first, there was a session that all of us had to do where we had to go and take a CPR class. We had to take a phlebotomy class. And it was just to like get our requirements up to date. So after we completed that class, then we were allowed to go onto the floor. And then that was when the preceptor came in. So when you're going onto the floor after taking a class, that's usually the first time that you're going to be sticking a patient. Like you're just gonna go right on in there. So they're gonna watch you, make sure that you're doing everything right. And there's a certain amount of hours that you have to do that skill in order to get it checked off of your list. So, so there's literally a whole list of things that they want you to be able to do that you have to complete successfully before you're able to go off on the floor by yourself. So yes, there are opportunities to be trained while you're on the job as a PCT. So there are also places that want you to know head on how to do the skills, which is what my current job, um, I had to be able to do everything in the job that I'm in right now. So I would just look at the requirements for the job um, and then if you're not able to do the skills, if it says that you'll be trained and all of that, then you're good to go. But if it doesn't, I would definitely ask about that in your interview because if you're not able to do the skills, you don't want to give them the impression that you do know how to do it. And then you go into the job and then you don't know how to do it. So, <laughs> so yeah, this was my little short Q and A video. If you do have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. Please leave them in the comments below because I can definitely answer them for you. But these are the ones that I just have been getting a lot lately. So I wanted to make sure I went ahead and addressed these right now. So yes, definitely, if you have any other questions, please let me know and I will be glad to answer them for you. I didn't say it in the beginning of the video, but if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're interested in my content, go ahead and hit that bell because I do have more information coming for you. So yeah, that is the end of this vlog. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye.